Welcome to the Kale Hauser Leadership Secrets Podcast. Today, we're going to ask, are you a victim or a creator? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Kale Hauser Leadership Secrets Podcast. Thank you for joining me. Hey, I wanted to talk a little bit about this concept of two sides of a coin. Uh, it may be I don't know if you want to say extreme on one case or the other, but this is easily two different roles that we can find ourselves in. Uh, and it actually permeates and affects so many things in every aspect of our life. And that is you can choose to be a victim, right? Or you can choose to be a creator. Now this concept is not my own. It's not something that I just invented these two terms to discuss about. It's actually discussed uh, in the 10X Rule book by Grant Cardone. And it was recently brought back to my attention by a uh, mentorship call that we were having. And, and one of the sales managers there was talking about his job as the sales manager is really just to remind people of what they already know. And I thought that was so interesting. I'm like, okay, so here you are, you're like the manager of this massively successful sales organization. And you're just admittedly saying, I don't teach people new things. I just remind them of what they already know. And he does it by these different, you know, quotes and, and statements. And one of them was, uh, and he was talking to us about this concept of, are you a victim or are you a creator? And, and so, he, you know, kind of broke it down a little bit further uh, as, as it does in the book of the 10X rule book by Grant Cardone of the, the victim mentality, it really comes down to responsibility. The victim mentality says, I'm not responsible for anything, everything happens to me, right? Does that make sense? Like a victim, when we think of it in a classical sense, is something has happened to that person that is, you know, something they didn't want to happen. And that's what makes them a victim. It was out of their control, quote unquote, out of their control. But this is a slightly different interpretation of that and of that mentality because it is a mentality. It's you know you hear it also in, in today's popular culture, the victim mentality, and that's what he's referring to because it is so absolutely true. Now, Jocko Will Wilnick, I think it is right, the uh, Echelon Front guy, uh, the former Navy SEAL commander, and all that that jazz. He wrote a book about extreme ownership, and he kind of talks about this a little bit um, from his perspective. Not so much the victim mentality, but the perspective of everything that happens to you is because of you and and you must take ownership of that whatever you want to happen have happen in your life you need to go out and do it instead of waiting uh, for other people to make it happen for you but he takes it as expectedly to the extreme of literally anything and everything and i'm not talking about that so much but i do want to talk a little bit about this concept of the victim mentality and how we use it to really kind of sabotage ourselves and i have been 100 percent guilty of this as well of like oh my gosh like i can't believe that happened and oh man it's it's somebody else's fault and i had no control over the situation and then but when you really remove that initial emotion which is usually a negative emotion because it usually has something to do with a failure or a letdown or argument whatever the case is it's usually something not good uh and you remove that emotion and you start really analyzing it for the purpose of learning and correcting action, you kind of start to see your contributing factors into that situation. But victims, he brought up a point about victims are never secure. And I got to thinking about that. I'm like, oh, what is that? What does that mean? Victims are never secure. And he's like, well, well, yeah, because they're always waiting for something else to happen in their world. They're always giving that responsibility over either actively or just by lack of their own action to somebody else. Does that make sense? Because they're, they're allowing somebody else to control the inputs into their life. Now that could easily be a spouse, that could be a boss, that could be a coworker, that could be um, you know, whomever has access to your sphere of influence and you're giving them that type of control. And I've talked about this a little bit before in the past in the sense of People that you get angry with, you are giving them control of you. You're giving them control of your emotions by getting angry at them. Does that make sense? Like you may be justified in your anger. They may have legitimately wronged you in some way, but by reacting emotionally, emotionally in that sense and, and letting that anger control you, you are giving that person control of you with that anger. Hence, you are a victim. You are treating that as a victim mentality of letting somebody else control you. And what this is interesting is, you know, and that's beyond just your relationships, because that could be that you're never secure in your finances, you're never secure in your business, you're never secure in your friendships, like all those types of things. If you have this type of mentality, you're just really this ticking time bomb of 
just being vulnerable to somebody else's whim. Again, whether it's a spouse, a child, a, a parent, you know, brothers and sisters, bosses, coworkers, all those types of relationships that we have on every every type of daily um, basis, we're we're just at their whim when we have that victim mentality. And the reality is, and you, as you start to kind of parse this down and, and dissect it a little bit, is you you no longer have control or take control of what is being put in or out of your own life and your own relationships because everything happens to you instead of because of you. Does that make sense? A victim, things happen to them, not because of them, right? And we always, or at least commonly, think of a victim in the negative sense, right? We're never a, oh, I was a victim of that lottery ticket this weekend <laughs> and, I, and I won $100,000 on a scratch-off ticket, right? No, you're like, you're a victim of, man, I bought that lottery ticket and I didn't win anything. I got three busts or whatever the scratch off is. I haven't done a scratch off in forever and ever. And one is a victim of it's, it's the, it's the lottery's fault. It's the, it's the convenience store's fault for selling you the wrong ticket. And that's your, that's the victim mentality in, in a very simplistic sense, right? Forgetting that you're taking responsibility of now you're $5 poorer because you invested in something that has clearly advertised a one in whatever it is, $500,000 shot or 500,000 shot ratio of hitting a, hitting a lottery, a couple hundred bucks or whatever, right? Does that make sense? You, you're, you're shifting that blame and letting that external force control you. And in this case, you know, your $5 on your scratch ticket or whatever, it's a, it's a simple example. Or you can transition into being a creator. You can transition into some, somebody that makes things happen. You take responsibility for your actions. You take responsibility for how you influence whatever scenario you're, you are in. You take responsibility for the culture in your workplace. If you are the leader of that workplace, you take responsibility to how you react to those situations and what you do to change, to grow, and to improve. And you can be that creator. Everyone can. You know, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're successful, quote unquote successful, or just starting out, you can be that creator because it's, it's really a mindset thing. What are you contributing? What are you doing to actively make things happen? Because you can make it happen. You can drive those results. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, automatically, boom, you're just overnight successful because oh, I'm a creator now. Like, no, that's not how it works, right? That's a little bit of common sense. There are things you have to learn and, and go through. But another really interesting quote out of the same book, the 10X rule book, was once you commit to your line of action, whatever that is, so think about a line of action that maybe you've been avoiding. Think about a line of action or a course of action or a direction that you've been wanting to go, but you just haven't committed to it for whatever reason it is. And I would argue, and the book argues and makes this point, and I think it's completely valid, is once you commit to that line of action, you will get immediate results. Think about that. Once you wholly commit to something, you can't help but get immediate results. And an easy one to think about this is, you know, say your fitness or losing weight. People that go around and say, oh, I tried that diet and it didn't work. Do they commit to the diet? Do they commit to learning about what are the healthy and proper ways to lose weight for you know, your age? Because certainly people that are in their 20s lose weight differently than somebody who's been carrying around that weight for 30 years and are now in their you know, 50s or 60s or 70s. Have you, did you commit to that process and learning and implementing and doing to see the results? Because once you do, you will see those immediate results. That's why it's so interesting when, you know, a lot of these programs that advertise, you know, I lost 10 pounds or 15 pounds the first week. And it's like, dude, just by not drinking a Mountain Dew three times a day and having Burger King every afternoon and, you know, Papa John's pizza every night for dinner and switching to water and maybe, you know, chicken and broccoli. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> you know, this makes sense. They saw those immediate results because they committed to a course of action. Again, a very simplistic, admittedly, example, but we can understand and, and see how that logic works. And I want to ask you and really challenge you to think about and discover what areas of your life, what areas of your business, of your relationships, of your finances, of your future, where are you being the victim? Where are you 
allowing some external force to control and drive your results? Where are you allowing somebody else to make those decisions for you and impact those decisions versus where have you, and it's not about all control, right? I'm, and I'm not trying to say it's about, you know, micromanaging or anything like that of, I want my salesman to perform, so I've got to be on them all the time. Like, no, that's, that's not how that works. But you do need to be responsible for their education, right? And their, you know, all those types of things in order to ensure they're equipped to be able to perform. But that is also part of being that creator of you are creating a culture, you are creating an organization to drive results that you want in whatever that looks like for your business. Does that make sense? So take a second if you haven't already, maybe jot it down, text it to yourself. I do that all the time. I have, I text myself like, oh, that's a really good idea because I know my memory doesn't work. I've, I've done it several times actually, even with podcast um, episode ideas where I'll be sitting somewhere. I'm like, oh, I should really talk about that, but maybe I don't have access to my phone or something or I'm just too busy to, to write it down. And then I'll remember that I had a really good idea for a podcast episode, but I'll have no idea what it is. And don't do that to yourself. That's again, me being the victim mentality to my own self of not taking the action to be the creator. Like I, I had the creative moment and then I let it go because I was a victim to my own circumstance of not remembering or, or failing to, to document it and write it down. So to everybody's loss because it was probably the best podcast idea ever on the planet, right? It's like Jack Black, what is it? Uh, uh, the tribute song, right? Couldn't remember the greatest song in the world. This is just a tribute. And that's what this podcast is, <laughs> a tribute to the greatest podcast in the world. So anyway, if you haven't already, definitely check out Grant Cardone's um, 10X Rulebook. Um, I'll put a link to it in Amazon. Uh, you can check it out. It's, it's phenomenal. Um, if you can implement, shoot, even half or a quarter of what he talks about in that, your life and business will, will drastically change. But think about this concept of victim versus creator. What side of the fence, what side of the spectrum are you falling on most commonly? And then how can you fix that and change that? Cool. If you need help with that, please absolutely drop us a line. And I would love to talk with you and chat with you. Have a fantastic afternoon, no matter where you're at in the world. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.